What I would really like the, the world to know about Jean Stratton Porter is what an amazing person she was, uh, especially for the time. She was obviously an unusual woman uh, because she didn't stay at home with a bunch of children. She didn't live the stereotypical um, housekeeper uh, role of the day. She was very, very independent. She didn't finish high school, uh, but that was of her own choosing. And she just took charge of her life. And she was an author, but also a movie producer, uh, an illustrator, a naturalist, a nature photographer, a musician. Um, she was just one of those people that uh, marched by her own drummer and um, didn't let anything get in her way. Jean Stratton Porter experienced a creative process. The pendulum swing from high activity, writing day and night, to quiet contemplation and thinking. And the last place she lived in Indiana, Wildflower Woods, on Sylvan Lake in Rome City, is where she learned that they were making movies. And she just knew no limits and just was an amazingly strong and talented person. Uh, for the day or even today. 1917 and 18 were unusually difficult years for Jean Stratton Porter. She was wading through an abnormally long period of writer's block and for the first time in her life she was coming to terms with her own mortality. Deaths and departures had trailed the end of the decade for her. She was looking for a fresh start so she went west in 1919. The 1920s was the period roughly where LA really grew from a farm town to a, a real city, uh, largely because of two industries, um, Hollywood and then the aviation industry at post-World War One. California was where her books were being adapted into films. Motion pictures had transformed LA into a boom town. Jean was also lucky enough to have several family members living in Hollywood already, so she set up a new nest in a little bungalow between 3rd and 4th Street, just a few blocks from her siblings and their adult children. I sorta of like this glorious sunshine, the pergola of Cherokee roses, the orange trees and blood-red poinsettias, and the mockingbirds tame as robins at home. In the silent era, uh, at the beginning of the film industry, film was um, a largely uh, tawdry medium, uh, but in the 1920s it was moving more towards legitimacy, and so certainly there was an effort to produce more wholesome films, and there was a large section of the audience uh, that was looking for that kind of material that rejected more of the jazz era, and uh, Gene Stratton Porter's films would have fallen into that category. Uh, that was it was really written for the people. So it has a much uh, more fluid, um, easygoing style uh, that really wasn't critically acclaimed uh, very well by her years of the day, but it was very, very well received with the people. And that's because they really related life of the average person. It was not very common for authors to write a book, commission a screenplay, uh, and then independently produce the film. Uh, that would have been a rare experience at the time. She had not been happy with Paramount and Columbia's versions of her books. Seeking more control over the conversions of them to film, she opened a production studio. As a motion picture producer, I shall continue to present idealized pictures of life. Pictures of men and women who inspire charity and honor. Looking to produce family-friendly films, she teamed up with James Leo Meehan, who would eventually become her son-in-law. Jean had always been a bit of an outsider back in Indiana. Though she had been highly respected for her professions, her unorthodox marriage and lifestyle had led her to be a loner. It is a blaze of color, a voice of rapture, a deep note of earnestness, a gay note of entertainment. Fine folks these artistic creative people be. In Los Angeles, she was meeting many kindred spirits and forming more friendships than she had ever had in Indiana. Do not criticize actors. They are an industrious lot, and they have much to their credit. Look at the donut and not at the hole. 
Her creative spark was reignited in ways she had never dreamed possible. She started writing poetry for the first time since her girlhood. After the release of Jean's controversial book, Her Father's Daughter, she began construction on a palatial 22-room mansion styled after the English Tudor tradition. It was to be set in a lovely wooded spot and built to reflect the color scheme of the landscape as to not disturb the wildlife. It was the first home in what was to become Bel Air. She intended for it to be the California version of Wildflower Woods. Give me a few years and I will guarantee to make my little mountain say to all and sundry, my name is Flora Ave, because flora means flowers and ave means birds. She also found inspiration at Catalina Island and enjoyed the privacy she found there. Catalina Island in the 1920s was owned by William Wrigley Jr. and it was uh, a popular filming location and kind of a hip place to hang out for people in the entertainment industry. No cars were allowed on the island as half of it was deemed a nature sanctuary, but Jean Stratton Porter received special permission to own one so that she could gather specimens and document the fauna and flora of the island. Jean decided to build another home there in the seaside town of Avalon. She called the spacious getaway Singing Waters, after the melodious babbling of the fountain she built there out of pudding stone she had imported from Indiana. Today, her Catalina home has been converted into a church. I have long since decided that I so love California that this is the land in which I wish to finish my living and to do my dying. Jean finished writing her last novel there. The Keeper of the Bees. The main character of this tale was a young World War I veteran dealing with post-traumatic stress syndrome that finds solace in nature. She had no idea that this was to be her final novel. Her interests were running in even more directions as she edged into her mid-sixties. She was enjoying traveling across the vast Golden State. Seeing John Murr's Redwoods was a sight that touched the inner vestiges of her soul. In the economy of nature, Nothing is ever lost. I cannot believe that the soul of man shall prove the one exception. At the end of 1924, she was allowed into the inner sanctum of Santa Barbara's mission to gather cuttings, a rare honor as the monks that lived there were barred from even speaking to a woman. The day after her Santa Barbara trip, the ever busy hands of the bird woman would be untimely halted forever on December 6th, 1924. She was in an accident with her chauffeur-driven car. When Jean Stratton Porter died, there were millions of copies of her books in circulation worldwide. In fact, she was compared to Teddy Roosevelt in her impact on the conservation movement. And in Los Angeles alone, every school had a tree planted in her honor in their schoolyard. Jean Stratton Porter was entered in the heart of Hollywood, right behind Paramount. Though the Hollywood Cemetery boasts of an unusual array of fauna and flora, this situation was against her wishes. Eventually, both she and her daughter Jeanette's bodies were transferred back to Wildflower Woods, where they rest today. Though their final spot is not quite made to the specifications she requested, it can be inferred that a woman who took pride in creating fine homes in life would not oppose such a lovely one to carry out her eternal slumber. I think one of Jean Stratton Porter's uh, most important uh, contributions to society today obviously were her entertainment aspects through her books and movies, but then also in her ability to reunite people with nature and the natural surroundings. The ideals that Jean had at the time, studying nature, ecology, um, kind of the Go Green movement were things that she was very, very interested in. She was interested in um, bringing people back to nature. And there's a very important movement going on right now called No Child Left Inside. And that's to get kids back out and enjoying nature. And that's exactly what she did with her literature, was to bring nature into people's homes. The interconnectivity between hearth, home, and nature will never go out of style.